I'd like to talk about vector topology now. This is something that we'll build into some of our layers to make sure that things behave well, things being the functions we apply in spatial analysis. Operations like area calculations or adjacency or containment or connectedness or several others suppose and require we have planar topology, particularly for polygons or networks of lines that meet certain specified rules. Well, what is topology? They're geometric properties that we force on our data layers so that things work well. Uh, if we don't make sure that generally the ends meet of our lines that we intend to meet, there are no gaps or overshoots, and that we have complete coverage in many cases, that is we have no gaps or overlaps between adjacent polygons or full connectedness in a network, then we can do all sorts of warping or twisting or changing, and these adjacencies, connectivities, and containments all maintain truth across these warpings. And you might wonder, well, why are we ever going to warp the data? Well, we do it quite often in something called projections, which we'll talk about in a future video. But even if we don't ever warp our data, if it's not topologically correct, we might get incorrect answers. One of the things about our topology is it's always or almost always planar. That is, the data can't lay above other data. You can have one line that occupies the same space as another line and not be intersecting with that line. So we have to make sure that this holds. For example, here we have a node which indicates that these two lines intersect, and here there's no node, which means it's a crossed line. Again, there are other crossed lines here. So this is non-planar. They don't fall in the same plane. Same thing for these areas down here. These areas don't seem to be planar because there's an overlap. You can see one um, down below the other in this overlap there for these two polygons, and they're non-planar, and hence they'll be non-topological. Planar data, we have nodes at every line intersection, and there are no polygons on top of other polygons. There's one, two, three polygons here instead of just two. And so we want to make sure that our data are planar and topologically correct. We enforce topology through rules that we typically use algorithms to apply to data to make sure they meet those rules. So here I have rules that say, well, parcel polygons must not have gaps. So here I have a set of parcels. You can see them in the green here in the background. And we have gaps here between parcels. There's an area indicated by white where they don't completely cover the landscape, the fabric here is torn. And we have another gap here. This is probably an omission. They just didn't digitize that parcel in here. It's probably an error in that when they digitized, they weren't paying enough attention and didn't have their snapping set, something we'll talk about later, but basically to make sure that the edges connect. <clears throat> another rule we might have is that all these buildings, which are shown here in tan, must have the centroids contained within them. And this may be a subtle thing. We may need it for some future analysis. And sometimes these creep in when we're doing processing. For example, we might have automatically calculated the centroids of these buildings. So there's an algorithm that decides where is the center of area of a, of a polygon. And it placed it outside the building. So that might have created a topological error through processing for these um, interlayer calculation, right? Because the centroid is one layer and the building is another layer. And so we can have topology enforced between layers, but um, in this case, we might have created an error inadvertently, or they may have been digitized and this one was omitted. So we can have errors from various sources. Finally, there's a topological rule here that says building polygons must not cross parcel polygons, and we see we're getting that error in several locations here where the buildings overlap. Now, most topology rule systems allow you to put exceptions in. You may have most cases where buildings don't cross parcel boundaries, but there may be a few instances where that's allowed. Somebody has a double-sized lot, which is actually two lots put together they own, and they've built a building across the parcels. And so if that's a known condition, you can go and mark exceptions. 
Um, we have another example here of building the topology rules and applying them. This is from an Esri base product. Uh, we have two layers here, buildings and land cover, and these are the rules we want to apply. The, the land cover classes can't overlap or have gaps, so that's within one layer. Edges of buildings can't overlap, that is the buildings can't impinge on other buildings, or they can't have gaps with the land cover. We want the two layers to create a fabric that completely covers our area of interest. And buildings are isolated, so we don't have to worry about building building overlaps or gaps. That is, we're not looking at the buildings um, overlapping each other. Esri has a whole series of rules that you can apply. This is just a subset. And you pick the rules to enforce the topological constraints you want for your layers, both between and within layers. So must not overlap is a single layer rule, saying, well, if I have polygons, they can't overlap. Must not have gaps, again, a single layer rule. Within that layer, there must not be any gaps, no open parcels. Uh, must cover each other is between two layers. So here we have basically one polygon area complete layer, and it must completely cover another layer that's they're totally consistent. Or must be covered by the feature class of, so we could have one that's inside another, one layer that doesn't have the full extent of a bigger layer, but that bigger layer must completely cover um, the second layer. For our rules, the must not overlap, must not have gaps, and must not overlap with are the three rules we would pick. Now, sometimes you have to look through the rules and apply them artfully, so it isn't always straightforward. Here's an area that we're digitizing, and so we have buildings and the parcels behind them. And the parcels here have kind of an odd shape. We're basically saying, oh, we're looking at this um, land cover. I shouldn't have said parcels. I should have said land cover. And we have different land cover types. So we have sidewalks and lawns and and uh, boulevards, those sorts of things. And if we apply the topological rule, there's typically a utility that makes sure once we set up the rules in a table that they're met in the data layers we're looking at. So it checks for gaps and overlaps, and so we can identify them here. They're both with this rather poorly digitized area. So here we have a gap, and here we have two overlaps. And so it would flag that and would have to go back in and edit or fix these topological errors. Um, here's gaps and overlaps among layers. Again, we have building layers, and we have the land cover layer behind it, there's a gap and overlap with the building layer. And so it would identify those in the um, test utility and then flag them and we'd have to go back and fix them. Typically it looks something like this. We build the topology rules, we apply them, and you get some way of flagging the go gaps and overlaps. So here we have this gap that occurs between two polygons in our, our land cover layer, and it shows up, and often you'll get a list of those errors. It'll show up graphically, and it'll also give you a list, and you can zoom to those errors to find and fix them. So we'll spend time doing that in, uh, in an exercise associated with this section. In a lab portion of a course, you may actually do that. So uh, there's basically a process by which you can ensure topology. You have to be careful, though, sometimes. Many systems, because of the way the rules are set up, will give you what are called faux errors or not real errors. So here we have basically a land cover layer with the errors identified. And we notice that around every building, it shows an error. And that's not a real error. There's this rule we have that says that there must not be any gaps, but if we look, every place we have a building, we're going to have a gap because we don't want the buildings to overlap with the land cover. So there's a gap here for every building and it shows up as an error. That's not a real error. So typically this is where we would go in and mark this error as an exception if we don't want the error to show up. And then that gap error would not be flagged further on. So there's this, usually a, a facility that allows you to do that, allow passable errors. 
And if you have real errors near these um, faux errors, you have to be careful to make sure you're flagging the right error and assiduously check. But it's still uh, one of the utilities within the, the rule development and testing and topological creation utilities. Okay, so topology basically should understand the concept of topology, be able to define planar topology, describe how rules can be created and applied to enforce them, and understand what a faux error is. This presentation plus the readings in the textbook should help you do that.